Amen. If you have a Bible and some sermon notes, they will come in handy this morning. Uh, I was just asked this question yesterday, and I'm, I'm asked this question on a regular basis. It uh, usually uh, sounds something like this. Pastor, do you believe that we are living in the last days? I do believe we are living in the last days. And I, I do believe that the things that are coming upon the planet are, as Jesus said, birth pains. The, the fact that something is about to happen. Now, whether it's in 2012, you know, I'll let you wrestle with that one. But sure enough, the Bible promises that Jesus Christ will come back to this planet and he will make things right. He will settle his accounts. What should be our reaction? What should be our focus until he does come back? Well, the Bible says in Luke chapter 21, verse 28, when you see these things come to pass, and they are coming to pass, here's your reaction. It's not go hide, go cower, go find a cave, you know, sell all your possessions, get a rifle and a generator, and, and, and go off into the mountains. He says, look up, for your redemption is drawing near. It just means that Jesus Christ is drawing near, and he's going to come, and he's going to snatch away his church. He's going to take his church. The Bible calls it the catching away. We call it the rapture. There will be a rapture of the church. And judgment will come upon this earth. And we're just we're seeing little examples of that, you know, in, in the world situation. But there's a little warning here in your notes, and it's to believers. Are there any believers in the house? Amen. Amen. It says the worse things get in the world today, the more opportunities there will be to yield to temptation. But equally true is the fact that there will be more opportunities to stand firm and be strengthened in your faith. And it's up to you. Are you going to yield to temptation? Because, you know, the worse things get, the more apt people are to just kind of check out and find things to either satisfy or tranquilize. Can anybody relate to what I'm saying? Right? Anything from drugs to alcohol to TV to, to uh, illicit sex, pornography, you name it. These things are merely distractions. They're merely ways that man tries to get through uh, life and situations. Well, today we're going to look at the fact that there, there are tests and trials that we go through. There, there are temptations that we are faced with every day, but we don't have to lay down and be steamrolled by them. Somebody taught me long ago that we're supposed to steamroll the devil, and the devil is not supposed to steamroll us. There's also a question that is, is asked in this particular passage of Scripture. If you'd like to turn to Luke chapter 18, that would be beneficial to all of us. Luke chapter 18. I love this little portion of scripture. It's a parable that Jesus himself tells his disciples in Luke chapter 18. And the very first verse says, Then Jesus told his disciples, his followers, his beloved, his friends, a parable to show them or to teach them that they should always pray and not give up. They should always pray and not give up. So here's, here's a choice that basically he, he gives every, every disciple, every believer. Either you pray or either you give up. You know, we're, we're faced with that every day. Either pray, either trust him, either persevere, either continue, or either give up. Okay? And then it goes on to say, he said, in a certain town, there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared about men. And there was a widow, thank God for the widows, in that town who kept coming to him with the plea, quote, grant me justice against my adversary. Are you there? Yeah. Verse four. For some time he refused, but finally, say finally, finally. He said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care about men, Yet because this widow keeps bothering me, 
I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually wear me out with her coming. You ever try to appease somebody just to get them off your back? Verse 6, And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see to it that they get justice and quickly. However, here's the question. When the Son of Man comes, who's the Son of Man? Jesus. That's another name for Jesus. The Son of Man, capital S and capital M. Son of Man. When he comes, here's the question. Will he find faith on the earth? That's the question. When he comes back, will there still be a cluster of believers standing firm? Or will everybody have will, will everybody at that point uh, you know disperse and backslide? It, it, isn't that sad? Will he find faith? Will he find people still believing after all these years? I read this and I think, my goodness, all the years that I've served the Lord, and I have to tell you, every single day I feel like quitting. And every single day I make the choice to continue. Because I know there will be a day when Jesus Christ himself will come back. And I want him to see me believing him and trusting him as I did at the very beginning. Amen? Jesus said to return to your first love, that place where... You had a relationship with him. It was fresh. It was powerful. It was meaningful. Can you relate to that? He said, go back to that place on a regular basis. Will he find faith? Now, let's look at some good advice in the book of James, if you'd like to turn there. We heard from Jesus. Now we'll hear from James. And basically, this, this first chapter talks about Trials. Pastor Rene uh, quoted it as he, he shared about what he's going through. It's very apropos today. Because um, even though we get tempted, even though we go through trials and troubles, somebody say troubles, we want to be able to stand firm. Right? Do you want to stand firm? Okay, this is going to give you some help. So what I want to do, with your permission, is read the whole chapter. Okay, thank you, Felicia. I appreciate that. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes scattered among the nations, consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Because you know that the testing, King James says, the trying of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to him. Wisdom is a good thing. But when he asks, he must believe and not doubt, because he who doubts is like the wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That man should not think he will receive anything from the Lord. He is double-minded. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all he does. The brother in humble circumstances ought to take pride in this high position, but the one who is rich should take pride in their low position if they're putting all their hope in their riches, right? Because all, because he will pass away like the wildflower. Flower, for the sun rises with scorching heat and withers the plant, its blossom falls and its beauty is destroyed. In the same way, the rich man will fade away even while he is going about his business. In other words, he's comparing him to a flower. A flower looks good for a while, right? But sooner or later, the flower is going to be gone. In contrast to that, verse 12, very key verse, blessed is the man who perseveres under trial. Because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when by his own evil desire is dragged away and enticed. 
Then after the 